Okay, um, people have been asking me about how the uh, Game Boy shader works, so I thought I'd just give a quick run through of how how it, it specifically works and how you can do something similar in Otter or whatever you want. Um, so first I'll just run it and just do a quick run through of what it does. Uh, so you'll see the colors, um, sort of using uh, the DMG01 original Game Boy colors. It's pretty close, it's not exactly accurate. Um, that'll change at some point. Um, I've also got the Game Boy Pocket colors. Um, as you'll know, the actual colors that you see on the screen are not data, they're not in the actual palette. The actual data of the Game Boy is just grayscale, and the physical properties of the LCD screen that they use um, determines like what the actual colors are. So that's why the original one was sort of had this greenish blue hue, and then the Game Boy Pocket had this silvery gray, which was always kind of cool. Um, so yeah, um, you got this screen glare, uh, which is pretty uh, standard uh, on the Game Boy. It's not exactly accurate, but it kind of gets the point across. Um, it was always <laughs> kind of annoying as a kid, like, you know, sitting in the back of the car trying to play a Game Boy and, like, the, the lights changing around you and you have to, like, tilt the screen around to kind of get the glare out of the spot that you're trying to look at. Um, you also see the there's, like, this inset shadow along the edges that comes from the screen is actually uh, pressed in inside the device uh, like a couple millimeters so you get this cast shadow which was always super annoying in like Mario six golden coins or any of the Mario games because the score UI was like right there and you couldn't see what was going on when the light was like too far over like this so um, other than that there's actually a, a ghost like a screen LCD ghosting that I had working, but I, I sort of changed some of the rendering stuff, so that's broken currently, but I'll fix that. You'll also see here um, some like scratches and grime that's on the screen uh, that like sort of like lights up with the lighting. Um, and uh, yeah, so I think that's all of the elements. I also added a reflection. Um, that's a new thing, which I will uh, had turned off for some reason. Um, you see, it's a, kind of dumb. It's a reflection of my face. Uh, uh, I think at some point I will uh, make that uh, use a webcam so it'll be your, your own face, but it's kind of silly. And it's kind of distracting, and so I just turned it off for now. Um, yeah, so I'll just do a quick run through of how the shader works and how it's set up inside of Otter, the Otter 2D framework. Um, it's pretty simple. Um, it's not like simulated in any way. It's uh, it's all just sort of tech art BS. Just <laughs> you know, just uh, do what feels right, and just, it's not. Yeah, there's no. There's not gonna be a paper on how it works. It's all just complete hacks. Um, yeah, it's uh, so the real basic thing is that I'm just assigning a shader to the screen um, to the games main surface. Uh, now that's actually what's breaking the, the ghosting because what you want to do with the ghosting is render to a separate buffer uh, only partially clear at every frame and then when you run that through your shader you'll get it kind of a a like fall off gradient of um, past frames that stack up and slowly fade away which emulates the LCD ghosting effect so uh, that's currently turned off because it doesn't it doesn't work the way I have it set up right now, but that doesn't really matter. So um, it's really simple. Just anywhere I have this post class that just sort of manages all of the the textures and shader and stuff. But you just uh, make a new shader, use a vertex shader and the fragment shader, um, assign some textures just using a set parameter, um, and uh, then somewhere in the game. Um, you set. I'm just setting the main game surface to use the shader, but um, like I said before, you'll want to do that. But you also want to run, run it through like the uh, a separate. Like I have this post surface that um, just extends surface and then just doesn't clear fully every frame. It just partially clears, sort of an accumulation buffer sort of thing. Um, so. Um, to break down how it actually works, I'll just I'll just pick one little thing and go with that. So to start off with the palette, um, 
the screen is actually uh, it actually it's just grayscale. So all of the assets, if you look at the assets, they're all um, they're all just black and white. Um, you can see here, um, they're just grayscale. You know, like the little dudes, uh, and they get run through a ramp shader, which um, Here's the ramp for the DMG01 Fat Game Boy. Here's the one for the Game Boy Pocket. Um, just from left to right, it just remaps the values. Um, and it does that through a texture lookup. So you can see here, uh, this is the base texture. This is just um, using the texture coordinates of the screen, grab the, the main texture. So this is just, you know, your, your, your default will basically just be this line here. Um, and then here I'm just like defining a light position. None of this stuff is really relevant at the moment. Um, but yeah, down here, this, um, this it just used the base, the uh, red channel, the dot x is the red channel of the base. So it would be in Photoshop, it would be like, um, it would be like use uh, this value here, uh, the red channel of a grayscale image, so it's just uh, you know a float value of yeah. Use this as a texture coordinate for this in the uh, x direction. So if it's black, you'll get this pixel. If it's white, you'll get this pixel. Which, um, if you're familiar with Photoshop, it's exactly the same thing as doing a gradient map. Um, which does the same thing here. Let me move this over. So it's just a gradient map. So you can see from left to right, um, it remaps the color. So it's just doing exactly that same thing. Um, yeah, so it's very simple. That's how you get the palette. And I have I have a button in the game, um, you know, to swap that out. I just store two different textures and change it. Um, you can do that right here. Um, it's really simple. You know, just uh, at the beginning, load up the textures right here, and you know, just change it when you press the key. No big deal. Um, so yeah, there's the, that's the palette. It's super easy. No big deal. Um, the next thing is probably the glare. The glare is pretty simple. There's um, I use a couple different textures here. Uh, um, in a real game, you probably don't want to do like dozens of texture samples, but this is really this is only a couple. Um, so I just like to store things in textures; it's a lot easier to manage. Like for example, this this is the uh, light fall off for the glare. You could do this in the shader with some math, but this is easier to edit. Like I could easily make it whatever shape I wanted, or like adjust the. I could adjust the fall off in here without having to mess around with all sorts of math because that's boring and this is supposed to be fun. So <laughs> um, this other channel is sort of uh, just the screen grime. It's just a random. Uh, I think this was a. I don't even know where this texture came from. It, it's in my random library of textures. It might be a uh, cookie sheet with <laughs> with nasty rust all over it uh and then just some scratches and it's not really accurate i guess you know the game boy screen doesn't look like that but it sort of emulates or simulates the little uh you know the junk it's on your kid fingers and scratches from chucking it at the wall when you die too many times um so with that i just have this mouse position right here um somewhere. Oh, yeah, this light position, which comes from the mouse position, which uh, you can pass in through anywhere. You should probably do it in a, like a render update somewhere so that your frames are synced, but I just do it in the world update because I'm this is all just sloppy and lazy right now. Um, but it's super simple. You just um, pass to that shader instance uh, the set parameter, and I'm just getting the mouse position and passing it in, and you know there you go. Um, it's really easy. I mean, a lot of other engines, it's really annoying to like set up shaders and get shader uniforms, and you have to go through this annoying process. But in Otter, it's literally just uh, 
you set the parameter in here, just make sure you're setting it, and then in the shader, just de declare it here. It's really, that's it. That's really nice. Um, it will, the GLSL compiler will throw out anything that you don't use. So if you like define something here, uh, but then you don't use it in here, it, it'll get warnings every frame about it not using it because it, it, uh, it'll just optimize it out which is nice but kind of annoying sometimes like that's why these are commented out over here because uh, I'm not actually using this time parameter but it does exist um, but in the compiled shader it's not using it so it doesn't exist and it's trying to set a parameter that isn't there so yeah that's just something to keep in mind um, so the next thing I guess is the shadow offset the little uh, inset shadow um, that's really easy also it's also a texture um, so what I do here is um, it's just a texture with a slight um, gray at the borders and because the texture coordinates are clamped meaning um, if you if you're looking up the texture with a coordinate that is outside of the 0 to 1 range it'll um, it'll kind of do that it'll uh, it'll just push, it'll use the last pixel. So, um, you know, it'll kind of do this sort of thing up here. Um, so what you get from that is as you move around, it's just sort of stretching the texture coordinates out at the edges. Um, so that's how you can get kind of an infinite d uh, depth. So, um, like you can see here, it, um, you know, that's, this, this one could actually go as far as I wanted it to based on um, the shader parameters but yeah, that's how that works I just look up the texture and I'm pushing it in here you can see um, the, there's a light position which is the mouse um, I'm doing this times three because there's some annoying thing with uh, I'm actually scaling the screen by three so just ignore that for now um, and uh, so yeah so the light direction is just um, the, the direction of the, the light from the center of the screen so um, it's pretty simple so like yeah, as I move this around I just have a vector that is the light uh, you know the lights relative position to the screen which is a directional vector so if you actually push the texture coordinates so you can see here um, I'm just looking at the texture um, and then I'm this is the main base texture coordinates and then I'm pushing it those coordinates a little bit in that light vector so um, it's actually the inverse of the light vector so that you get uh, you know you get that cool it's like coming from the, the light source um, uh, so that's pretty simple and same with the glare actually um, like these uh, the speckly junk that's really simple um, it's in here under screen grind yeah this is just I'm just look up the glare and then just grab the uh, blue channel of the glare texture, which you can see here. And um, where is it? Uh, yeah, down here. I'm just multiplying the light. I'm just adding to the the screen um, the light times the screen grind. So what you end up getting is if you take this. If you were to take something like this. Um, and take this guy just uh, make this simple yeah so what you get um, is basically this effect well ignore those edges there um, you get this effect it just follows the light around so it's also pretty simple and that's basically it I guess yeah, there's really not much else to it. Um, the other thing is, uh, right now I'm using um, this, you know, bilinear filter on the pixels, um, so there's a little bit of a blur because the pixels were not exactly super crisp. And another thing that I haven't added yet is, um, if you if you zoom in, like if you get up real close to a Game Boy, you'll see the that there's actually like little tiny gaps in between each pixel. So that's something I'm going to add in the shader. Um, is so each pixel has like a quarter pixel gap um, to separate them, which is I think is a cool effect. 
Um, so that's pretty much it. Um, as for the game itself, there's really nothing to it. It's, it's eventually going to be an RTS, uh, which is sort of sadistic of me to make an RTS on a Game Boy because it's just impossible to do with two buttons. There was only ever one RTS on the Game Boy. I think it was called Wizard something. I don't know. Um, but I never played it. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's going to be a, about psychic wolves versus evil bad guy humans and... Um, yeah, you just like, you know, grab dudes and move them around. Um, the idea is to make something that resembles the feeling of playing on a Game Boy, um, and is like, follows the spirit of a Game Boy, but it's not actual, I'm not implementing hardware restrictions like, you know, what was it, eight or, eight, eight sprites per row, um, can render at a time. Uh, I'm not doing stuff like that. I'm just assuming that, uh, I figured out some sort of fancy smart algorithm, but instead I just, you know, it's a brand new computer. Um, yeah, so you can like select dudes and you bring up the little menu and you can do the powers. Um, I'll have like a whole tech tree unlock system and then, you know, spawners and all that fancy RTS stuff, but yeah, so that's basically it. If you have any questions about how shaders work or how shaders and otter work, um, just post on the otter forums or hit me up on Twitter. I can totally help with shaders. It's something that's fun. Um, so yeah, um, hope you dig it. And if you want to keep up with my silly little game, um, follow me on Twitter at floatvoid. So yeah, later.